So I went back into the conference room, we left the door open, waiting for this thing to begin, and literally within a minute or two, there was this massive explosion. Uh, the air conditioning system seemed like it failed. I mean, metal and metal and all that type of sound, the air got sucked out of the room. There was a, collect a collective gasp of probably 20 or 30 people. Some Something bad happened, some bomb went off, there's no doubt in my mind about that. And the scary part was the building was going. And it just kept on going and rolling. Then it rolled back the other way. And at that point, you know, there's, the fire alarms are going off. It is loud. It is deafeningly loud. It, if this isn't a fight or flight type of situation in life, I don't know what is. And there's nothing to fight. So the first thing I did when everything stabilized, I, uh, I left everything. Left my jacket. I left my, uh, my PC, my suitcase. Ran out the door, looking out the windows for life me. Everything's coming down from above. Uh, cement, debris, smoke, fire. It was just a was hell on earth right then. It was a gorgeous day just a few moments before. So as I'm running toward the fire escape, I'm trying to figure out, I'm one of these Virgo babies, and we were stereotypically known of being overanalyzing things, so I'm trying to figure out why did you bomb the top of a building? So I ran past the fire escape, or the fire, uh, the uh, elevators, grabbed a woman who was trying to hit the uh, elevator button, got her toward the fire escape, and I looked over my left shoulder, saw 63, and had a really bad feeling. Opened up the door, and literally it was two to three power steps down each flight, power turn on the railings, on the landings, and doing it again. Absolutely flew. Not really paying much attention to the smell, the eyes burning. It, it's getting a little... Uh, hot in there too. By 20 more floors there was uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people inside that stairwell. And at that point you realize it's step, step, and that's also when you start thinking. And thinking is not your best friend at this time, so why did they bomb? What is it that we're breathing in? Was it some kind of delivery mechanism? Is there something else going on? And then we got word that we got hit by a plane. You know, hit by a plane. And I'm thinking, all right, all right, nobody's trying to kill us. This is not a horrific thing. How much damage can a two-seat Cessna do? So at this point, you're breathing again. No one's trying to kill you. It's not that big a deal. You know, you got to feel bad for the folks in the plane, but it's not 50,000 people that are going to die this day. And within a minute or two, our building got hit with another explosion. Not nearly as strong as the first one, but we hit the concussion wave, the building did rock, and you absolutely heard it reverberate throughout the uh, stairwell. And I looked at the person behind me and said, so they're gonna say that's another plane. And uh, so the, the plane theory is gone, I'm back to bombs. And I'm also thinking that there's gonna be a bomb in the stairwell, and this is a lot lambs to a slaughter type of thing. No one's moving anymore. No one's passing, there's nowhere to go, but you know, you, people are coming in the stairwell, they're giving you wet towels, you're putting it over your face, it is really burning your eyes and you're coughing on some of these different uh, fumes. Every third to fourth floor of the fire escape, there was a, uh, an unlocked door, but every three to four are locked. So I kept on keeping a mental note, just in case, worst case scenario, I need an escape plan. I don't have any control of the situation, but at least I could try to figure out where to go if worst case scenario happens. Around the 33rd floor, I gave up. Uh, claustrophobia was majorly kicking in at that point. And I opened up the door. And the smoke that was billowing in, it was floor to ceiling smoke. I had many people saying many four letter words basically to get that door shut immediately. You're gonna live, you're gonna die in that stairwell. So you resigned to that. So another 10 floors or so, there's a water main break or a water artery break or whatever terminology you want. So we're being pushed down and all I wanted to do you know, beyond escape is I'm feeling incredibly alone. Thousands of people were behind me, my phone's up in the, uh, up in the uh, 63rd floor. And I looked down my pocket and I've got my red StarTac phone, my little flip phone for those of you that had one of those way back when. And it's blinking and I had messages from my dad I had a couple messages on there from a few other folks. Couldn't play the messages, but I'll tell you what. I grabbed that phone, called the house, called my parents' house, and I hit send no less than six, seven hundred times. Quick busy, fast busy. It was just a paperweight. You could not get anything out. 
So I, I keep, you know, you keep trying. It's going to work one of these times. Law of averages, law of numbers. Never did in the stairwell. Around the 16th floor, I, I, I heard something from below, which I will never, ever, ever forget. Uh, make room. They're coming up. Who in their right mind would be coming up? And about a minute later, I see people leaning back, putting their backs to the fire escape, making room on the inside, and there was the first gentleman, the first firefighter I saw from Rescue One. I saw 11 of these firefighters from Rescue One that day. When I, when I, When I saw that first firefighter, I went from knowing that we're going to die to knowing that we're going to live. This man was not wearing a mask. The amount of equipment that he was wearing, the look in his eyes, the look of determination. The, the poor man must have bruises on his back because I jumped in with the pats on the back. God bless you, you're a hero. I and everybody knew what it meant when you saw this first responder. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of people there that day, and there's two types of people that were there. The ones escaping, and the ones going in to save the people that were trying to escape. I love all these people. <laughs> and you first responders are my heroes. I saw 11 of you going up the stairwell that day, and uh, I, I've seen a lot of documentaries on Rescue One. All 11 folks did not make it out that day. When I got down to the uh, bottom floor, I saw a couple hundred firefighters at the uh, stairwells, at the uh, in the lobby. It just it was surreal.